<laughs> Luckily, you have your hair. I know, right? I need to get it cut so bad. All right, shall we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the Son of a Boy Dad podcast. Today it is May 21st. It is motherfucking live from HQ3 in the motherfucking house. My, it's my dad's birthday. Happy birthday, it's dad. Francis's dad's birthday. Regale Too bad he will not be hearing this for two weeks. <laughs> 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 regale us with some tales of uh your dad has an awesome first name doesn't he corky corky oh very fun mm -hmm. i thought it was gonna be like thor <laughs> no <laughs> it's corky corky yeah that's a good name is mm -hmm. he a powerful man like do people like do people like like respect him a lot people respect him yeah. but he's not a sort of hyper masculine mm -mm. soft power and and disarming yeah and yeah. very likable charming yeah did he get pissed off when that movie Corky Romano came out and bastardized his good name? I don't think so. I don't even know if he was aware that movie had come out. I don't think he saw it. Someone needs to tell him. That yeah. was Chris Kattan's when he there was a moment in time where he could book any movie he wanted. That was a good movie. Did I you ever seen watch it? it? No. You guys on some cookies. <laughs> yeah, that was good. It was good. Maybe yeah. Uh, maybe it sucked actually. I don't think it was very good. I think you're. <laughs> I was a prisoner of the time, but that's Same. when they were cranking comedies out. You can't even fucking joke anymore. No. <laughs> uh, can't even make movies about pop tarts anymore. Yeah, it's <laughs> fucking bullshit. Did you got? Did you watch that? No, it's a kids movie, isn't it? I'm a grown man. I don't know that it is. Grown men don't watch kids movies. They watch. It's yeah, an old person, old person movie. Is, uh, is it well, young like Bucks the don't movie watch old about McDonald's, movies. but about Pop-Tarts a little bit? I think it's because he wrote that joke about Pop-Tarts a while ago, right? I saw that tweet too. Yeah. Is that what it is? I don't know. I don't. I, I He's didn't... been obsessed with Pop-Tarts. Yeah, there was like an old video that I watched like years ago that was like, <sighs> Jerry Seinfeld walks through how to write a joke yeah. and then it doesn't help you at all. Actually, it actually I might thought make it you worse did. at writing jokes. I thought it did. <laughs> what was the uh, crux of it? It was like, let's think of something. Pop-Tarts. Pop-Tarts, it's just fun. The name itself is already funny. And then... It, it, well, the part that helped me was that he finally figured out... It took him a long, long time to figure out the punchline, which is that... Uh, you never, you don't have to like worry about them going stale because they were never fresh to begin with. Mm. And he said that that part it just he's like i know it doesn't seem like much but that took me so long that's the final punchline and for me i struggle the most with punchlines mm. you're a premise man premises and tag tags are fine it's it's not hard for me to layer quick jokes in but to finish a joke is hard yes. can't relate huh can't relate do you think of your punchlines first and then work backwards like a murder yeah. mystery novel? Really? For the most part, yeah. I usually know what the joke is going to be, and then I just go up on stage and, and try and figure out how to get there. That's, for me... Very it, Louis C.K. style. So often... <laughs> writing on stage? I that's I mean, I write on stage, and I, I say that because it's, I'm just lazy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. But the, the whole point for me is that I will have a funny premise all the way through, and I can never figure out how to get out and I'll try a bunch of different punchlines, and so often I'm just like, all right, well, let's just go back to the last big laugh and then end the joke. There. Yeah, no, I'm the opposite. I'm like, I have a joke right now that I'm working on, and it's about uh, pretty privilege and about how I do it with my dogs. And I, and I have a joke for the dog part, and I think it's funny, and it works, but getting there is a fucking nightmare. Mm. And then it bombs. People are like, what is this guy talking about? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to tighten the screws. Got to tighten the screws or just get rid of the joke completely. Yeah, that happens too. <laughs> yeah. After about five times, you're like, all right, maybe it's me. Yeah. Maybe it's me and it's not them. I do that pretty much every time. You can only run into so many bad crowds before yeah. you're like, <laughs> yeah. They're the, the masses are correct. Well, the problem is it'll work the first time and then you're like, oh, the, the worst. May as well just put this one out now. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's fresh. When one crowd laughs right off, off the bat on a joke, you will it it takes so much longer to admit your failure yeah uh because for then the next 10 crowds you're like what <laughs> why aren't they like that one crowd that yeah. i had this got to laugh once i used to do a joke about monkeypox 
when I had my when I had that rash. Yes. And I uh, pityriasis rosacea. Yes, exactly. And uh, <laughs> and and I did it at Stand Up New York, and it like mur- like like people were coming up to me after being like that monkeypox joke was hilarious, and then it <laughs> literally never worked again. And I did it for probably two years straight, and it bombed every single time. <laughs> And I was like, ah, it'll get there. It's going to come back soon. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, this joke fucking sucks. Because monkeypox is just like a prisoner. It was just like a fleeting like- It was like a one week thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't that that popular. Dude, I used to have a joke. <clears throat> uh, this was early comedy. And it was around the time, do you remember the, I don't remember which moment in, in society, the, the hands up, don't shoot. It was like a police brutality. We, we People would say that. Yes. Yeah. Someone someone got killed, I, and I forgive me for forgetting his name. I don't think I can do that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Say his name. I was hoping you'd <laughs> say that. Say I was hoping you'd say name. that. No, but some someone got got killed, and then the and then the oh, it's the Alec Baldwin lady. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Someone got killed, and, and then the the protest cry, the people coming together behind that moment, the, the protest was hands up, don't shoot. Right, and I had a joke about how I love to play pickup basketball and in the courts in Brooklyn because I'm the only white guy, and the only advice they ever give me is hands up, don't shoot. <laughs> and uh, I thought it was so funny. That yeah. is funny. But as the as the protest <clears throat> faded from the consciousness, the joke did worse and worse yeah. and worse. Yeah. And I ultimately had to just give it up because nobody remembered what that was anymore. And yeah. I would, that, to me, shame on them. Well. Because I never forgot. That's tough when you, like something is, a, you're a prisoner of the moment and you're trying to crank out George Floyd jokes or whatever. Right. But then some people, like, some are, some things are timeless. Like a fucking, uh, I saw someone doing a Lorena Bobbitt joke recently. Really? I don't even know what she just cut her husband's dick off, right? That's yeah, that. She like threw it into a field. Yeah. I mean, and and why would you know this like extremely niche piece of I only pop know it from culture the history? Oh yeah, from like from Yak and like yeah. stand up comedians doing uh mm-hmm. right. There's just hanging on to I yeah. mean, but but that is maybe the funniest thing that's ever happened. Yeah, it is hilarious. It's a timeless premise. Every comedian had had a joke about that. Like every OJ's comedian Bronco. at that time. 96 must have been the best time for fucking comedy. OJ jokes, fresh. Yep. Fucking Lorena Baba jokes, fresh. I think 96 was actually a terrible year for comedy, wasn't it? The Atlanta bombing. Why would you know? Why would you even <laughs> say that? Because I think that was like when the boom was completely over from the 80s and it was like comedy clubs were completely empty. Dumbass. You, you've, done, you've done your history research on market trends of comedy no it's just like pretty well known that like no it's not i'm not going to allow that it's not well known i wouldn't have known that 1996 was when comedy clubs saw major reductions in their ticket sales market crash in in 96 it was like louis ck and patrice o'neill were at the cellar performing for like three people it was a brutal time that's just because that was before they were known yeah but uh but in the 80s those clubs were filled to the brim i was talking to a guy last night who was an older comic and he was saying that in the 80s, he was he used to manage a club and he said that he would he was giving he would like text people being like, Hey, I have a three hundred dollar spot tonight in New York, and they'd be like, I don't leave my house for three hundred dollars. Cause that's how because that's how big comedy was in the 80s. Mm. I, I, I feel like I don't know how true I'm gonna doubt the veracity of some of this. And not not I'm not putting that on you. I'm just putting it on whatever it was that you were told or read. I've I mean you can look it up. It's well, I'm history. pretty sure I remember hearing a story that Louis would go do the cellar and he would be paid five dollars. And so he had to make a decision about whether he would take a cab to his next spot. Yeah. Or because he couldn't get there in time. Probably in the nineties, not the eighties. I think that's where we're I think but we're I don't think <laughs> if that shit is true. I think and I, that's what I just said. Is all, if all time is cyclical, then that means that the, another crash is coming. Yeah. That's, that's what everyone true. says. Yeah, the bubble's gonna burst. The bubble's already bursted. I mean, I don't know why everyone talks about this bubble. But people talk about this with skateboarding, too, that skateboarding goes and comes and goes and comes. And, you know, as long as you're really good at skateboarding, 
The X Games You're is still paying. Make a living. Then Red Bull is still doling out checks. <clears throat> yeah, but I I think comedy is big right now for like a specific group of comedians who sell out arenas and theaters. It's and then, just like music. I mean, I, people are always gonna. It's gonna be music's uh, gonna dip, dude. Mu people are gonna stop listening to music. True. We're just gonna be riding around in silence for like ten yeah. years. Start listening to speeches <laughs> like me. Yeah. I listen. I ride around in silence uh, as my preference. So the bubble's bursting. Yeah, the music bubble. I think my head is bursting. <laughs> yeah, and I need peace and quiet. Classical music will get you there. Does it now? Classical music is the antidote for a fucking busy head. Do you listen to symphonic classical music, or do you like just one piano playing some Chopin or Haydn or something? Um, I'll go on some sometimes just like the whatever like public radio station mm. in the low nineties, like nice. ninety point one, ninety yep. point seven. What is this on your car? In the car, yeah, makes you feel especially if you're listening that night, makes you feel like you're in a goddamn Lexus commercial. Oh yeah, nice. smooth jazz. I will listen to some classical here and there, mostly jazz though. Because you're listening some, at mostly night, mostly some coffee table jazz. They put in jazz at, at night because, in case you want to throw on the AM radio and fuck. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. If you want a slow stroke to the AM radio, I love a little coffee table jazz. The dulcet tunes of the fucking. Sl I also <laughs> like the coffee house station on Sirius. Mm. Ooh, little Nora Jones. Yes. Made it for someone. Yeah. Ooh, 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 no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shit. I love that song. Not quite. I was listening to that this morning. I hit it. <laughs> In fact, that was pitch perfect. And it might have even been to the correct key. <laughs> <laughs> now you're all over the place. Pull it up right Play now. It. Why don't you leave it to Francis? Hold Play on it. to that, Roan. Play it. I guess we'll just get copyrighted. <laughs> May as well just forget the rest of the episode. We're about to get targeted ads for fucking coffee. For fucking pub publicity. Nora Jones Here does have to be the most relaxing it. music. We were it's, we were a little low. We were a little flat. I could probably hit it. I have an extremely good singing voice. We were flat. I was flat. No, you were actually pretty on. Yeah, no, that was on. That yeah. was it. No. it was, All right, don't play anymore. I was probably two 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 notes below. And no, I don't know that first no, one you did. I think you were actually it. pretty close to it. And that's sass backtracking. He yeah. does not do that. I think you were closer than you think. Shaz played defensive back. He just fall on his ass. Yep. <laughs> the man cannot backtrack. Yeah. He does not know how to backpedal, which I'm saying is a compliment. Actually, absolutely. Compliment received and accepted. <laughs> Fair catch. <laughs> <laughs> Fair catch indeed. Dude, this past weekend, I was uh, I was in the Bahamas for two days with my wife for her birthday. Yes. And uh, I ran into a cunt. Oh no! Yeah, troubling it, troubling to say the least. Are you talking about? Are you? You're not meaning conch. No, no. While they do have uh, delicious conch fritters there, or a nice conch salad, mm. and I hate to say the word. Me it, too. It makes my skin crawl to even say the word. word. But there is no other way to put it. Uh, I ran square into a cunt. What happened? It was fucking brutal. We're sitting. You know that if you hold a cunt up to your ear, you can actually hear the sound <laughs> yeah, hear of the other women menstruating <laughs> miles away. But contrary to popular belief, cunt is not an aphrodisiac. <laughs> that is correct. People yeah. used to think that, but a cunt is not an, <laughs> indeed an aphrodisiac. We sat down uh, by the pool trying to catch some a little bit of vitamin D and sunny D. <laughs> <laughs> sunny D, delicious. Yeah, sugary. But, Sugary, sweet. But tasty. Yeah. Big D. Dallas. Dallas Cowboys. Jerry Jones. <laughs> Jenny Jones. <laughs> Jenny McCarthy. Davey Jones' Big locker. <laughs> locker rooms. We could do it. We could do it all. We sat down next to these two shrimp-looking women, a Jewish daughter and a Jewish mother. Long I Island. I don't like where this is heading. The first thing that they say... <laughs> I'm tired of those Celine sunglasses. I'm seeing too many people wearing them. I for, I check my wife's face to see if she's wearing Celine. Thank God she wasn't because if these women were fucking being cuntish towards my wife, domestic violence. But uh um, crime <laughs> to my wife for, for wearing the Celine sunglasses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, luckily. <laughs> Luckily, she wasn't. But two words later, they're like, 
oh, they're fucking scrolling their phones. And they're like, Jenny, she's wearing this fucking dress, disgusting dress. She can keep on fucking selling her clothes. Maybe she'll even do it on the same website that Silvana sells her oh. clothes on. I said, no. Not our Silvana. <laughs> the first lady? The, not the first lady or the former first. I guess you're always a first lady. Yeah, forever. It's like, it's like being the president. A, a yeah. Marine. Yeah. yeah. You're just always a first lady. And I I I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Yeah. And they started to talk about Silvana. And then a couple minutes later, they're like, and did you hear he's not even divorced? And that's when it cemented it. They were talking about my president. Yeah. They were talking about El Silvana Dente. and then Dente yeah. and the fucking pool. Mm -hmm. And I was Dente fucking- Dente DiVincenzo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Did I you was... have to step in? I was Because I would have clocked a bitch if that happened. I was I, I was really getting to that point. And it's, I'm trying to get to a calming down point. Yeah, yeah. After after Stillergate, I say, backwards I need 10. to take a deep breath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to calm down from fucking 10 and get my fucking mind right. Yeah. And so I go and get a, a lunch. Yeah. Mahi. Yeah. Sandwich. Get a little, <laughs> go get lunch. <laughs> get a little mahi mahi. I need to calm down. I need, I need a, a mahi lunch. sandwich. I need a strawberry mojito and some mahi. Yeah, I would. I would have gotten a drink. I'm gonna but... blow a gasket. No, I need a full lunch. <laughs> I needed the malaise of a sandwich in my body so I could fucking fully be calm. Yeah. I get back 45 minutes later to sit down next to these two cunts, and. They're still talking about Silvana 45 minutes later. They said, look at the dress she's wearing. Delete your Instagram. And by this time, not only am I pissed off, my wife is fucking seething. Well, that's her sister. <laughs> that's yeah. her sister. Yeah. They're like this. Yeah. Waste management 2023, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were out there with fucking Mrs. Portnoy yeah. and AB. Yeah. Alex Fugman, dude. Yeah. They were out there at the fearsome foursome. This well, is, I'm getting confused now. <laughs> this is complicated. <laughs> we'll break it down. Uh, okay, but keep going, keep style. going, keep going. Yeah. It was just, uh, we literally had to leave not only the pool, the resort. Because <laughs> I was getting so fucking pissed off that they were talking this much. These women couldn't hold Silvana's jock strap. Dude, these women couldn't fucking breathe the dignified air that Silvana, rest in peace, would yeah. fucking breathe and then they have the fucking nerve to talk about her so glibly a mother talking about her to her mom as if they talked about her before oh yeah as if that they the mom knew who silvana was mm. talking shit about the fucking celine sunglasses and then fucking throwing dirt on the good name putting mustard on the good jacket of miss silvana it fucking pissed me off to no end and i really had no one to talk about it with but people are just fucking in different countries be smirching yeah. Silvana. Yeah. And it fucking pisses me off, dude. Are you, um, just out of curiosity, are you up for a, a contract negotiation? <laughs> <laughs> if I am, this would be hurting it because Dave has unfortunately moved on from. No, I think he would, I think he would look fondly upon you, uh, defending, defending and, and by extension, him. Uh, well, he does. If I know anything episode. about Roan, he was sitting there popping chips in his mouth, just listening the entire time. <laughs> yeah, there was she doesn't no even pick out those outfits herself. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't was... even choose them. She is a stylist. She says she chooses them herself. But they're, they're not. I trust me. I know her. No, keep going. You guys want any? You want some mahi? <laughs> oh my god, dude! There's multiple. Car I you just perk up your ears, and people are fucking talking about barstool. It truly blew Especially my mind. Especially Miss Peaches. People. I swear to God, yeah. we're at dinner one night. There's a, t a full yeah. table of six birthday celebration. They sang a Bahamanian yeah. birthday song to these people, and they're talking about peaches like it's fucking. My grandma asked me about Miss Peaches. Mm. She came up to me and she was like, "Have you gotten to meet Miss Peaches yet?" And I was like, "How do you even know? How do you know about that?" <laughs> It's crazy that she knows about that. You need to write that into your next contract. Like, I don't want more money. Yeah. But I want some FaceTime with Peaches. Yeah. It is it is truly beyond belief how much better that dog's life is than mine. Yeah. The level of sort of luxury and food. That might be the top dog. Full stop. No, come on. What some are people are saying Paris that, that dog Hilton's needs training. got a dog. Like, you know, there's people. But, I mean, well, look at Biden's dog. Biden's, I guess... Biden's well, dog. Biden's be. dog was is Bane. Yeah, that is the Bane of dogs. It's a wolf, and they can't put it down. Yeah, but it's it would. Did it say they? 
a bit like 20 to 30 Secret Service agents. Yeah. That thing oh, is definitely you think a just... corrective shock collar is your friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can barely feel it. I was born in a corrective shock collar. <laughs> There's definitely that dog's definitely just locked in a cage for 20 hours a day. No, but mm. it says it's, I think it has free reign. I think it might be making the decisions. It could be. <laughs> I think it has access to the nuclear codes and yeah. is handcuffed to a briefcase that has the fucking button. <laughs> <laughs> I think that dog has That dog stays in the White House when Trump gets reelected. It's not leaving. You no. can't kick it out. No. Yeah. It's I think it has all the over the place. I think that that dog knows which Secret Service agent is fucking Jill Biden and it's fucking hold, it's lording the information mm-hmm. over. You guys have you guys heard that rumor that a Secret Service guy is fucking Jill Biden? Yeah. No, that would be crazy. Mm. Would that was a, that was an interesting plot line of uh House of Cards. Did you guys watch that show? No. Mm-hmm. You never watched it? That's Spacey, right? You'd love it. Yeah? Yeah. Because you're the biggest Spacey guy I know. I fucking love Spacey. <laughs> You've been defending him even as the... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... They're trying to keep a white man down. Yeah. You were... I like it. I'm a fan of his poetry. <laughs> when your career kicked off, you were probably in his wheelhouse. Yeah, absolutely. I would say. But he... Uh, now I that mean, you're back on the workout program, honestly, you're, you might be back. Yeah. First four or five seasons of that show... <sighs> Boy, was a tour de force. Really, really good. He could not miss. Yeah. I, I think I, I watched like maybe three or four seasons of it. Uh, but did was she fucking a Secret Service agent? Well, he, they they had a Secret Service agent that they hired for their personal detail. And then they both fucked him. Damn. No. Because yeah, he was by. No. Or yeah, he was by Kevin Spacey, and then his wife Robin Wright knew, and they were they had an arrangement that was fine, and then they seduced the Secret Service agent. Maybe Rose. Kevin Spacey just got too into character. He really might have, and that's why he molested all of those boys. He put the by and by partisan, the by and by camera. He was like right. Heath Ledger with the Joker, <laughs> locking himself in a hotel room with a bunch of young boys. Yeah, but in in the dark night, I don't remember the Joker hanging out with the Olsen twins. <laughs> he was method molesting. <laughs> Talking about the row. By the way, do you know that their fashion label, the Olsen twins, they have a fashion label called the row? Yeah. You've heard? You, you old know row. This. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> Boys, old row. Yeah, they forget. make all those like Trump mugshot shirts. <laughs> That would be so funny. If Watts was, it was just Watts and the Olsen twins behind fucking old row. <laughs> Imagine if they're designing that. <laughs> Five types of tick. Wooded tick, forest tick, lawn tick, and lunatic. All right, you guys know spring is Confederate flag season. We're bringing it back. It's going to go crazy. We're thinking it's about not offensive. It's part of our legacy. <laughs> Make um, Darty's great again. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, uh, they have a fashion line, and it's legitimately one of the most expensive clothing brands at, in circulation. Yeah. Like I looked at some of the men. Apparently, their stuff is actually in in fashion circles is considered very good. Yeah. So they've succeeded as rebranding themselves as designers. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, the men's t shirts were nine nine hundred bucks. Damn so, Christ! Yeah. <clears throat> Old Row wants to secede as well in a different way from Barstool. No, just the country from the Union. Oh. Civil War. What style. does Old Row mean? Was I was. It was literally like just. Row. Yeah, it I was see. just an Instagram account that Barstool acquired, right? Uh, I think, so. but I think that they had a booming merchandise business. I That's think they right. acquired it because they were so good at selling uh, shirts. To I don't know. I guess it's. I don't even know where it booms, but to those guys that were at Ole Miss protesting. Yeah, that's Palestine. exactly what I was trying to. <laughs> land, I was trying to land on. That's mm-hmm. the exact demographic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like all of their last. Like if you open up their Safari on their phone, like one of their highlighted pages is Old Row official. <laughs> yeah. Old Row dot store. <laughs> the dot boys UK. are loading up. Actually, Old Row might not even be keeping up with the sensibilities of those Ole Miss boys. Yeah. True. Yeah, that's where Mincy had to get back to. Yeah. He's he's doing his tour of the South. Imagine if you saw Mincy in that video. <laughs> I mean, in a four, 20 years ago. Six fire! Uh, <laughs> Just Mincy. <laughs> 20 years ago, he 100% would be out there. Yeah. Didn't Mincy go to college for 10 years? <laughs> Or was it like fourteen years? I no, that's what that girl said. Yeah, that's, that's what that uh, that their, intern, their new intern. Said. Yeah, 
She reported back that Mincy was in college for a Van Wilder for 14 years. Who is that girl? Is she? I don't. What's the story there? She's got a big following. Yeah, right? she used to do like sketches and stuff. I think she still does, but she was like popping off a couple of years ago. What? So she's an intern. Yeah, I saw one on her Instagram. I thought it was uh, pretty funny. My point being, yeah, she seems like she should just have gotten hired full time. She, I think someone she, she said she has like four million followers on TikTok. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, we prefer sixty thousand in fat boys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. that's kind of more our wheel. Here's an idea: get a lobotomy <laughs> and gain <laughs> six hundred pounds. Yeah. Then we'll see what we can do about a full time contract. And track your gambling losses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then lie Declare about bankruptcy. Them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way. That is truly the way to our heart. Oh, sorry, you're a successful young female who would take us into a new gen demographic. Not gonna work for us now that was that was my job originally i was supposed to take us into a new demographic yeah half jews half jews <laughs> yeah you and natalie portman no she's <laughs> got to be full oh big natalie portman yeah full yeah <laughs> yeah she's she's i think israeli she is really <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think she's got israeli citizenship Damn. But they give that shit out. Yeah, I think they they're trying to collect everyone yeah. back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let my people go. <laughs> was Moses? He was Egyptian, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think so. Israel. When Moses went to Egypt's land, <laughs> yeah, that's let how... my people you know, he, go. Just because he went there doesn't mean that he was. That's a great song. I don't know. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good question. What was Moses' genealogy? Moses was a black man? Was he? That's going to piss off the old row, Moses boys. Malone. <laughs> Moses Malone. Moses <laughs> Malone. Moses Malone. Underrated. Speaking of Malone, did you see that photo of Drake with Carl Malone? No, I didn't see <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Dude, how about... Uh, was it, it's, a, it's a still photo? Yeah. Or photo Photoshop? Still photo at Drake's house. No. Yeah. With the mailman? Outside, posted up. Post Malone? No. That fucking breaks my heart. Also, I, I can no longer and stand And Josh Giddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy they're trying to trade Josh Giddy this offseason. Josh Giddy must be stoked about this Drake stuff. I don't think he is. A little representation in the community. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the more black brothers that... No, but that that didn't happen with Drake. That's all a nasty lie. But my point Is was it? that that I can't. Yeah, of course. They would have locked him up. He's too famous. Yeah, to true. Fuck. He's way too famous to fuck kids. <laughs> you know that he said it. I think he's the perfect amount of famous to fuck kids. No, Josh Giddy. No, Drake. Drake. No, with, with the no, fucking Josh Giddy's not nearly famous enough to be pulling <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> Rookie season. He looks so depressed at his season ending press conference. Dude, he's because he fell off a fucking bridge. People post his stats every night. He sucks now. He's washed. Yeah. He used to be posting on like TikTok every day last yeah. season. Yeah. He, he was like posting like pictures of himself. People used to kind of clown his game last year, being like, just go in slow motion and dribble past people. Yeah. And he would like affirm that. But I can no longer stand with my brother, Diddy. He is no longer my brother. Oh, because he wailed on that lady. Yeah, that was bad. That, that was, was pretty so rough. bad. Yeah. I'm decrying and denouncing. You can't. Separating myself. You were the from Rome Diddy. was the one confidently on here being like, I got inside sources saying none of it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And oh, then no. one week later. Yeah, no, I mean it was a month later. How do how how's your crew feeling? Because I know your crew runs deep in the Diddy in the Diddy community. We have to, we're basically putting together like a 401k plan for all the brothers that lost their jobs. We're putting together a pension plan so everybody can stay afloat in this t trial, this this tough time. It's bread lines, dude. Yeah. It's fucking cockroaches out of a canister. I, People have nothing to eat on. I don't know a ton about that whole story. I did see the video. My question it's is- It's all you need to see on. Yeah, it's like Ray well, Rice. But, right. I mean, my question is, he's been worse. accused of, of all sorts of different stuff. Not just the, the, the abuse and all that, but, you know, underage things, right? Yeah. And so that video comes out, and all of a sudden, the assumption is that every single thing is true. Yeah. And there's no there's way- there's smoke, that, there's fire, brother. Yeah, there's no way that he can now be like, listen, just because I beat the shit out of that girl doesn't mean that I fuck kids. Yeah. 
because no one's going to believe anything. He no, says. no. So that video is an affirmation of all the accusations. Yeah, pretty much. Who had that, that video? Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah. And, and they specifically can't try him for that video because it was from 2016. And there's, <laughs> for some reason, a statute of limitations on mm -hmm. even if you clearly see someone. And it's eight years. Like, what a random statute of limitations. Oh, I always thought it was 10. That's what I mean. Like, 10 years would make... I think it depends on where you are, where you're being tried. In Miami, they're like... Oh, no. In Miami, I think it's like one week. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, who who would go to all the restaurants? Who would go to restaurant week? Who would go to Art Basel if we had, didn't have a statute yeah. of limitations in Miami? You need to be it's able a to tight do shit twenty four like hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking insane. But but uh, my point is, who was sitting on that video? I doubt it was public. I bet it. I bet it was some fucking fourteen year old hacker who found it and leaked it. Shout out to the or no, 14th. didn't CNN acquire it? Isn't that who got it? Yeah, they had exclusive yeah. rights. Mm -hmm. But who the fuck was sitting on that? Unless, I mean, maybe they bought it. Oh, like a catch and kill? Maybe. Like a night crawler situation, night stalker, night crawler situation? Yeah, I don't know. It was a hotel footage. Was right? it a hotel? I yeah, thought it was a I thought, towel. Oh, I thought that was his house. <laughs> he's running down a hallway. Oh, she hits an elevator. Ima imagine uh, opening. I, your I wouldn't be surprised if he had an elevator in his house. Imagine opening your hotel door to like put put out your room service tray oh, yeah. after you're done, and Diddy's running down the hallway ass yeah. naked. Holy shit! Is that Sean Combs? <laughs> 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 Can't stop, won't stop. Oh man, that's a damning time, a damning time for Diddy. Loser, mm. bum, yeah. bum, sucker, sucker. Yeah. Yeah. Cornball are only a few words I could use to describe him. LeBron unfollowed him. If LeBron unfollows you, well, because LeBron's probably known for a while. Yeah, LeBron. I remember had I was there with him that night. I said, Sean, you don't got to do this, bro. You don't got to be wailing on your girl like this. Mm. Don't, yeah, he was in the hotel room. Be like, don't go get her. Yeah. She's running down the hallway. I said, don't do it. Those, I don't know it. why. I think those videos are so fucking funny. Yeah. I remember being there. It was me and Adolf. It was, oh, my uh, God, dude. I love those videos. <laughs> I love those videos. <laughs> I love leave, the, videos. leave those million people alone. <laughs> leave those six million alone. <laughs> Don't do it. They're so good. <laughs> the further back they go, the funnier they are. Like the like the like the Jesus ones. It was like I remember it was me and Jesus. We were sitting there, and I was like, "You got to carry that cross, man. People are gonna remember you forever if you carry that cross." <laughs> and he did it. <laughs> That's so fucking good. He said that he's not gonna get involved in the Lakers coaching search. They he fired said, their coach. I mean, it's basically he's saying that he's not going to lobby for J.J. Reddick to be their coach, oh. even though he has the podcast with J.J. Reddick. Oh, Shoot. and they want that's who they want. He is in the conversation. Boy, that's tough, man. I got to tell you. So I know J.J. Reddick has what well, I don't know him personally, oh. uh, but I know he lived in Dumbo. He was the big early celebrity that lived in Dumbo, the neighborhood we live in. And he had a sick apartment. I actually know which one it was. and. Uh, he did he, a Cribs episode th there. You yeah, can, like, that's what I the, saw. You can watch that episode. And it was cool. It's uh, like, like uh, almost Victorian. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Huge roof deck, all that stuff. And Sublime. His family was there and he's got kids. And um, they sold that place. And I thought when he got, when he retired, I remember thinking, oh, now he can finally live in this home with his family and whatever. But if it, you, you'd have to wonder as a wife waiting for your husband to retire and then all of a sudden he says, oh, by the way, I'm going to go back and be an NBA coach and have the exact same schedule that I had Probably as a Probably a more difficult schedule. Yeah, and yeah. I'm going to do it I'm in L.A. sleep at the arena every night. Yeah. <laughs> Watch tape <laughs> yeah. for 48 hours a day. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be brutal. The fact that Not I think fun. that these dudes, some of them love the lifestyle. Yeah. And it's almost like, what the fuck am I about to do at home? You guys see that dude, Joe Smith? His wife was a, uh, he was a number one overall pick in like maybe 95, the peak of comedy. I did see this. 94. And then his wife starts doing OnlyFans. And oh, no, the, I didn't see this. The whole saga unfolded like live. She would just go live and they would argue about it. 
and he'd be like, I'm trying to keep your ass at home. Like <laughs> we said we'd be done with this. And she's like, I have I have needs too. This was on her OnlyFans stream? They'd be arguing? This is uh, these these videos are public. I don't even think it's on OnlyFans because they weren't behind a paywall. But he was like, please stop selling your pussy online. <laughs> I was a number one overall pick. And she's like, you know what you signed up for with me. We met at the club or some shit oh, like shit. that. Oh. Basically, like. You can't save me. That type of shit. Yeah, you can't yeah. save. I'm yeah. unsavable. Don't save me. I don't want to be saved. Yeah, exactly. You catch, yeah. Sober rap. You catch the <laughs> bait. You catch the fish that you, whose bait you fish with. Something like that. Some shit like that. You that want, you want a fitness words chick. Myself. You fish with fitness bait you go fishing at the gym yes you want uh a hooter yeah you go fishing at the club you go to the club you want harrison bucker you meet you meet your wife in the kitchen <laughs> yeah you yeah. go into your own kitchen and you meet the woman that's already there you keep her there yeah you don't let her fucking exactly. go anywhere yeah but this dude is just i mean i the point being that these the like the lifestyle that surrounds the nba once you leave the nba it's hard it's you're almost in like withdrawal yeah. from the yeah. nba lifestyle a lot of quiet a lot of quiet what mm -hmm. do you think would be the most um what well, what sport would you want to coach the most like what would be your what would be your top sport to coach i do think it is the nba is i your was question, gonna say football is it from a lifestyle perspective or Everything. is it from a like which one do we actually think fundamentally based on our body of knowledge we could have any chance of succeeding at um no, not that. Not not that. Just assume that you already are good at coaching. Oh, okay. The sport. Which co which sport would you most want to coach? Mm. Would you be most interested in coaching? I think it's probably the NFL. Just from if sixteen games a year. Yes. Yeah. But you were, no. But you're. It's not like sixteen games provides a lesser schedule. I think NFL coaches do more than anybody else. Dude, baseball coach, baseball has like 180 games a year. Yeah, but what is a manager telling someone? There's literally a hitting coach and a pitching coach. He's not like, all right, fucking make sure you swing the bat good here. Like you're literally just walking around cosplaying as a baseball player as a fat old 65 year old. You have to wear the pants and shit like that. You're literally know. just crushing tobacco. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like I feel like coaching uh, coaching football is probably easier too because you're just coming up with plays. No, dude, coaching football, you literally you're the guy who has to be there at three in the morning, and you're fucking getting fired. The fan base cares way That's only more. If Hard Knocks is filming. <laughs> no one actually is getting there at three in the morning, dude. I guarantee these dudes are getting there at two forty five. Mike McDaniel's just gets there pretty early. Yeah, they definitely because of Hard Knocks. No, these dudes are fucking Andy Reid. Both of his like one of his sons died. The other one, like, died of, like, a heroin overdose. Yeah. The other one, like, ran somebody over, like, right before the Super Bowl. He was the most neglectful parent of all time. Yeah. Because he had to coach so hard. I'm like, yeah. Belichick. Belichick brought his family in. No. <laughs> Belichick was fucking 16-year-olds. What the fuck is that? Don't be spreading. <laughs> don't be spreading rumors like that. Belichick was walking out the back of a fucking beach house and fu uh, they caught him on ring camera. It wasn't a 16 year old. Who else has beach houses other than 16 year olds? Nobody. <laughs> no 16 year olds have beach houses. <laughs> All it was probably like a 25 year old. No, bro. It was, at, it was probably 18 to 22 year old. Do we know it was a share house? It had to have been the the neighborhood. Did he, did he have the wrinkles on his back from a deflated air mattress? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, Nick Sirianni literally off? fucks kids. <laughs> <laughs> Two things: one, if Nick Sirianni got a DUI and ran over someone within the next year, that wouldn't be surprising at all. And but the, we would sweep it under the rug like that Diddy video. Yeah, exactly. We would like we would sequester the video. Local Philly cops would be like. Don't tell anybody about this. Yeah. Nick Sirianni is a bum. I'll trade it for 700 level tickets. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make all this dash cam footage disappear if you just give me club level. The Eagles have a pretty good schedule. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible schedule. Great schedule. The Patriots have the hardest schedule in the NFL. You know who has a really good schedule is the Lions. The Patriots have more days off going into their games than anyone in NFL history. Well, the Patriots are the worst team in the NFL, and they're playing. But they also have the benefit of the more days off than anyone doesn't in NFL matter. history. They all Them have and the a lot Ravens. Of days what do you mean it doesn't matter? They all have more, a lot of days off. No, you know they have the best more schedule? than anyone in NFL history. Doesn't matter. I just they also have they also have they also have the most they're also going to have the most miles flown. There's no way for you to paint that in a way that he's going to accept it. They yeah. also have the, they're also having the most miles the, the most miles traveled all season. Yeah, because they live in the top corner of the United States. So that's another disadvantage. 
No, it's not. They're yes, living, it is. They have a private jet. They're traveling more than any other team in the NFL. I heard that they have underage kids on their jets sucking them off. They make pit stops at Epstein Island. Yeah. So that's why they have the most days off because they have to travel all around the fucking world every day. No, they don't yes, have to they travel do. around the world every day. Yes, they do. <laughs> they don't have to travel. They're going the long way. The Eagles yeah. have to go to fucking Brazil <laughs> They're this year. using what are you the curvature about? of the earth to go over the, the polar <laughs> <Yeah>. ice caps. <laughs> Yeah. They're going to use the gravity of the earth to just to swing to us Green Bay. around to, yeah, to, to Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. They uh, the, the Lions, though, I'm telling you. Got mm. the Lions to go undefeated this season. Wrong. I already bet it. $5 pays out 700 To go undefeated? Yeah, 17 and now. <laughs> no. Yeah, the Lions have a super easy schedule. Yeah, but no one goes undefeated. The, and it's not going to be the Lions, if anybody. Why? The Lions were great last year. Who's their number two receiver? Arma, Arma St. Brown. No, he's their number one. Um, I don't. It's yeah. Like Jigabia something. How, what is his name? Jigabia? What's his name? I mean, maybe Jameson Williams. What's, the, what's his name? What's the wide receiver's name? You know it. Maybe Jameson Williams. Is there, was there number two? Yeah, they had Josh Reynolds, but now he's not their number two. No depth of receiver. If Amon Ra goes down, who are they throwing it to? Iguchibia? Amon Ra is not going to go down. All on I'm saying that was a well, okay, if Jamar I'm Gibbs, if I'm playing defense, ja- Jameer against, Gibbs, if I'm playing defense against them, then I'm keying on Amon Ra. Yeah, then what are you going to do when Jameer Gibbs comes and runs a route right through your entire defense? <laughs> He's not going to. Jameer so Gibbs you, is the best running back in the league, right behind Christian McCaffrey. Really? Yes, I like that easily. Amon Ra cake. sounds like the new hotel from the Amon Group in <laughs> India. Yeah. Amon Ra. Yeah, that would be Come amazing. Come explore the I'm desert I'm staying sands. at the Amon Ra 5,000 a night. Yeah. I want to find this lion schedule and run through it. I hope people don't mind I'm talking ball this early in the season. I don't mind. It's early in the preseason. Shout out to Jared Goff, my brother who just signed to, for 212 mil. And then viewed my Instagram story that same day. Jared yeah. Goff? Crazy. Really? <laughs> Taking time. time off from his $212 million to check in on the bro. Mm. That's crazy. That's bro. Mm-hmm. That is bro. I didn't expect that. No, for sure. We should actually get him on. He actually asked about you at last year's Super Bowl. Really? Right after Waste Management. What'd he say? He was like, what's up with fucking the God? Oh, they probably all love me because I in my video, I get drafted to the Lions. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, but yeah, but They probably I, have like a poster of me hanging up in the locker room. Yeah, they probably have an empty locker of you, like yeah, Pat Tillman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they lay down a jersey every year on, on draft yeah. day for fucking sass. Damn, they should have had me announce their fucking pick. They, you probably could. Would have been future. huge. I mean, that meme will continue to grow. It's like compound yeah. interest. That, that would have been huge for all of us. Yeah, that yeah. would have been big. Who what? used that meme? Someone, Furtado. Someone, Nelly Fur- Furtado. Nelly Furtado. She likes the birds. Um. They play Chargers week one. Dub. Dub. Bucks week two. Dub. Dub. Cardinals week three. Dub. Dub. Seahawks week four. Dub. Dub. Bye week. Cowboys five. Uh, Easy dub. Where, where? At Dallas. Easy no, dub. That's an L. Oh, that's an L. They're losing that. That one. team. Dude, after there what happened last $5. season. No. After what happened last season, where they got the fucked by the refs against the against the Cowboys. Five dollars down the drain. That's and a, I hate to say this because I hate them boys. That's a dub easily. No, Vikings, dude. dub, Titans, dub, Packers, dub, Texans. Packers? Where is the Packers game? At Packers. <laughs> There's Forget another it. one. No, There's another L. No. Two losses. You guys are underestimating how good the Lions are. You're underestimating the Packers, bro. L- love, love. That's I was gonna say Texans might might be a shaky one. Yes, Texas will I'm, be shaky I'm as well. Project, I'm, Another I'm, L, projecting, I'm projecting the Texans, Texans to win the Super Bowl. Um, Jags, dub. Colts, dub. Bears, dub. Packers, dub. Bills, meh. Bears, dub again. 49ers, dub. Ooh, why would you say that? Well, 49ers. I'm counting six losses. 49ers in week 16? Please. You think they've already Please. benched Where's their that starters? Game? Where's the game? <laughs> I think they're all injured at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen, dude, Christian McCaffrey in the Super Bowl last year, like his knees were like locked in place. They had to shoot him with fucking anti-inflammatory injections. Those They have one good player and he gets destroyed. Debo Samuel is an old man. Don't say, don't say that the 49ers just have one good player. Please, the Bay Area will be on your helmet. <laughs> don't say that, dude. All I'm saying is Lions 17-0. Why don't you put a future on them to win the Super Bowl instead of to go an unrealistic 17-0? There's a much better chance of them winning a Super Bowl. Because I only wanted to bet $5. I already bet the Patriots win the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Yeah. 
the fuck is wrong with you? Ten dollars pays out like a million dollars. There's also zero percent chance that'll happen with their bigoted quarterback. The Patriots you can't run out of bigot, bro. Why is Drake May a bigot? Because he didn't follow any of the, his black. Oh yeah, he doesn't follow any black quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he wants to keep his timeline. He doesn't want to get like overwhelmed by the talent. I right, sneaky love your uh, Texans Super Bowl pick. Yeah. Why don't you bet them to win the Super Bowl? I will. Okay. I'd like I'd like them to lose a game early on, and then I can bet them to win. Oh, uh, once they fall because their to odds are bit. their odds are not like, not great right now. Yeah, but you just have to get in get in early because they have the quarterback on a rookie contract. They just added a stud receiver. Yeah, they just added a stud uh, running back. Just added a stud defensive end. Yeah, their offense is unbelievably stacked. Fuck yes, we should do a fantasy football league this year. Yeah, I mean, I did one. We did one last year, and then everyone gave up halfway through the season. I didn't. Well, yeah, because you had a good team. Yeah, because I drafted a great team. Well, I didn't know how to draft because I was on the mobile app and it wouldn't let me go off of auto pick. So I drafted two wide receivers in the first two picks. We got to get back in this year. I know. We're already thinking ball. I can't stop. I know. Well, now that the Bruins are out, I mean. Uh, Yeah, we can't think puck anymore. I did watch. Did you watch the game last night? No. Oilers, Canucks. This is the. This is way in the past. True. Great game. We got to look forward. We got to be a futuristic podcast. Yeah. True. Gotta talk about fucking hoverboards and shit like that. I'm just always thinking ball. It's ball. hard for me to break free of those shackles. Dude, the fucking future's a scary place. You hear that the 401k plan might have been a mistake? I saw that. Why? Do you explain? Good thing because, I got no money in it. Because you do? Because well, what? I have no money in it. Yeah. I mean, they're saying that it's uh, like if you have to dip into your 401k plan, it's basically going to be moot by the time that you need to retire and that it was another failed policy by Ronald Reagan to try and set up the uh the future of our country because same as it was it fell under Reaganomics essentially and it helps the rich get richer but those people already have enough retirement and it basically was uh, a tax free way to replace the pension because the pension was dominating in like steel and manufacturing and then ma- all that fell off and they couldn't afford to pay the pensions but people should have guaranteed salaries rather than making them s- like solely responsible to develop their own retirement mm. uh, um so social or so but, social what, but you said you started by saying that it depends on people dipping into their 401k and that's presuming before they turn if you dip into if you have like uh say you're like making fifty thousand dollars a year and you have to dip into your 401k because your kid has some kind of unforeseen medical crisis the amount of money you take out of your 401k will destroy the compounding interest going forward so it'll deplete what you're well and also you have to pay big penalties and you have to pay the big penalties um but that's why that's why we know. need a pension. That's why we need to become firefighters and ditch this bar stool shit. Or you just do what I do and go all liquid. <laughs> yeah. I think it also relies on people saving for retirement. Yeah. I'm just a liquid man. You need to start saving some for, for retirement, bro. They said that when am I I'm not going to I'm twenty percent of twenty percent of retired people are in poverty. Really? That's gonna be you, bro. <laughs> bro I'm never gonna retire. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be like Carlin. I wanna die on stage. That's the dream. Yeah. Actually, like Rodriguez, I'm gonna light myself on fire on stage. Did Rodriguez do that? I thought Rodriguez is still alive. Now he died last year. Oh, he did. Yeah, but there before people knew that he was. People all thought that he was dead for years. Yes, yes, yes. And they thought that he lit himself on fire on stage. Hmm. Some people thought that he shot himself in the head on stage, but the more common opinion was that he lit himself on fire. That is a crazy old wives' tale. I know. And then it turned out that he was just a painter in Detroit. <laughs> and then you told me he went on tour in South Africa. Right? He did. Uh, he just did like an arena run in South Africa, mm. and then went back to painting in Detroit. Pretty good. Yeah, they're still loving him in South Africa. That's the Tom Green model. Yeah, it's a great plan. I mean, that's got to be a, a great life. Yeah, just you, you, no one knows who you are in America, and then you just go across the world and you sell out stadiums in beautiful South Africa. Yeah, and there's like paparazzi everywhere, and then you just go back to America, fly coach. <laughs> Everyone's like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" <laughs> yeah you just start painting again yeah 
My tour guide in South Africa had a fucking nose picking problem that I like think about once a week. <laughs> <laughs> this dude could not stop fucking picking his nose as if he was invisible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As if we couldn't just see him. Sometimes as- you just got to be like that though. No, but he sometimes was- you just got to pick and just be like, I don't care who sees. I'm at a point where I don't care. Yeah. This guy was a factory. Like his, there was a, a, conveyor belt of boogers being sent towards his nose <laughs> at all times <laughs> and it, it was a fa- it's the, the van that he's using is a company van so there's probably other tour guys that have to use this van oh yeah and then they find a stalactite of boogers hanging on the steering wheel yeah. yeah so it was so disgusting like he didn't know that we were looking at him as he, he knew. explained he knew it was an alpha move you yeah. think it's a very alpha move to maintain eye contact <laughs> while you're mid-pick <laughs> Look away. Yeah. It wasn't this. No, it's it was the thumb. It's always got to, you got to go the thumb. The thumb forward. The thumb is a much man. My dad taught me that when I was very young. Yeah. He taught it's me how to pick tool. my nose. Yeah. Yeah. He said, this is, he said, you never pick with your, with your pointer finger. Someday That's for I'm children. be like you, dad. Yeah. I want to pick my nose like you. Damn. Sass in the cradle with the silver spoon. Yeah. Damn. Take your time. Think a lot. Think of everything <laughs> you got, worry. for you will still be here tomorrow, but your dreams may not. Use your thumb, pick your nose. I hope you can find some boogers. That type of shit. That type of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something to say. I thought you were going to make it rhyme, to be honest, but you didn't. I can. He does have that skill. There was a fucking- I got j- something to say. If you catch a fish and I don't, I'll kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been thinking about that the entire I week. Was, well, what, what would that mean? I mean, that would mean a lot. It would really, it would pretty much devalue your entire life. So it I've would been doing, determine that I am a better fisherman than no, you. A better not even man, close. You take out Fisher. You're a better man. No, that that see, and that pissed me off. And I almost replied to your tweet because I was when you tweeted and you were like, "Time to settle this battle of." And I was like, "There is no battle. What is the battle?" Well, I'm this a is our first battle that we've never battled. No, but it's not a battle because I catch fish and you don't. No, but fish you, the you, only time that you and I have ever been fishing together, neither of us caught a fish. Right now, the scoreboard we is didn't tied catch a fish because because your feet got too cold and we had to leave. Oh, was it me? Yes, was it me that got too cold? I, you guys were in the car huddling around, <laughs> going, mm, "The Tesla's only on two percent." Yeah, but I entered the river twenty five minutes before. Or you did because you were still fiddling around and because I had flies. to tie all of your knots. Oh. Also, I want to give you a you don't want to go out here and not be able to tie knots. So maybe I should have brought some tibet or something and taught you how to tie a clinch. Or I know at least a palm. I'm gonna watch a YouTube video and tie, tie my own. Because knots. you do not want to be out on this boat going, hey Sydney, could you tie my knots for me? Sydney Play and I game. Sydney and I are children of God. We are not gonna have a problem <laughs> tying our knots. Okay. It, but I'm just I, I think there's something about Francis that's just naturally better at you than some stuff. Like yeah, think about pool. Think about pool. Pool, yes. You played pool for so long. And but that's because Francis plays the... pool like an autistic guy where it's, he doesn't do any cool shots like I do. Cool shots? Yeah, you never see Francis going behind the back or banging it off walls. It's all angles. You don't fucking do cool shots. Yes, I do. No, you, I've never I seen you do cool I created the shot. cool shots. I'm all trick shots. I'm jumping over balls, shit like that. Yeah, running up the, the wall and I'm, like Jackie I like Chan. to slam it. I bang it. Francis is just, it's like a nice gent. And then you just go, oh, time to watch this They're one go in slow motion. Good at it, which is the goal of pool. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. not doing style points. He's not doing like free run pool. I got a bad feeling about this trip. I Seth. have a terrible feeling about it. I got a it. bad yeah. feeling about how this See, is going to go down. My bad feeling is because I watched a couple videos on people fly fishing for Cobia. And saltwater fly fishing is mostly you. You have to. It's not just like you're not just casting into the into the abyss. You're you're, you're abyss into the abyss. You're waiting to see the fish and then you start casting. Yeah, we're so targeting. Yeah. You're targeting. Yeah, you're sight fishing. I'm and, sight fishing. And yeah, yeah sorry, I'll, I'll catch you up on the only. No, no, I thought <laughs> and, I didn't know uh, if you were going to say that. And I was that was what I was about to say, <laughs> and, but then I just, I was glad you had it because. But worried. when you're fly fishing on a boat, depending on the size of the boat, we're not going to be all be able to cast at the same time. Not the same time. So what happens if if it's your turn to cast? And we we oh we finally found the cobia and then and then you get to catch a fish and then it's Listen, like brother, Harry, it's your if, time. If you're, if you're trying to tell me Harry, that you're going to say that someone is going to benefit from having more time on the on the boat to cast more, uh, then you are already looking for excuses. Have you ever read a runs through it? I've beaten you. He says that the reason that his brother is a better fisherman than him is because he casts twenty percent more than he does. What? Yeah, that's not what he says. Yes, he does. It absolutely is. 
what, what, when he g- gives he says, says part why of Brad Pitt gets he says better? part of the reason that my brother is such a better fisherman than I am is because he casts twenty percent more than I do. Mm. I mean that makes sense if you take twenty percent more pictures. Listen, why don't we just yes. more good pictures. let's count our casts? I'm absolutely not going to do that. Well, then you cannot complain when this. I catch more fish than you do, brother. I think we're going to be lucky to catch one fish. We're ca- we're fishing for like sharks. I am. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'm already excited that I'm in your head this much. I mean, I'm excited too because you don't even know how to double haul. I offered also to the listeners I'm gonna be, before this video comes out. I just want to let it be known when you see how ugly Francis's cast is. I want it to be known that I offered to take Francis to Central Park to show him how to double haul. Before Francis will pick it up and fucking. Uh, uh, I'll have it. Like, I watched his cast, brother. There's no, there's no, there's no fix. One hundred percent, he'll pick it up. His me- he's mechanically uh, a superior human. I am me- mechanically. I'm when I cast, what other anglers right come I want up you to me keep and they building go, up. We're gonna. We're gonna keep this tape because when you lay this foundation of of shit talk and insecurity, and then I come Ooh. home with five pictures of me holding big fat Ooh. fucking cobia, yeah, my, and you're my just, cobia. Oh, where's my fish? Uh, we are going to talk about it for an entire episode. If that happens when we land back, I'm not even going back. To, I'm just going straight back to New Jersey to go fishing again to get a to just to get to, numbers just on get, the board, just to get some numbers on the just board. To see yeah, one up. yeah. Yeah, like when you bought. I, I, and I would say if you do that, you should bring me so that I can sort of show you what I've learned, <laughs> brother. That you was would not be to able to set you. Would, you success. trust me, you would not be able to fish where I Listen, fish. Listen, I'm not talking shit right now because I, I don't know how this is going to go, and I do admit you have more uh, fishing experience than I do. But at the same time, I think you build it up to be this mystical lost art that is hard to learn, and that. You know, you, you oh, it's it, you know I don't know my fucking casts and all that. The double haul, but all that matters is the scoreboard at the end of the day. And if if we catch the same amount of fish, then it's going to be who caught the bigger fish. And no, gonna, you can't catch the same amount with the amount of shit talking. A same amount is a win for you. Oh, without a doubt. In fact, I think we need to we need to handicap it. It's and a say, handicap. If I catch within five fish of sass, dude, we're not going to catch. We're going fishing for one day. We're not going to be catching like twenty fish each. Speak for yourself, brother. Also, I don't. We're going to be with a guide. And my friend, he's a friend of mine. So that doesn't count. Like guiding fishing is. That's your. Everyone's going to catch fish. Listen to you. Just completely taking the fucking credit out of this trip already. I haven't even taken off. And you are already undermining the validity of this c- contest. Where I was, where I, I don't know. I, I have a, a good place for you guys to go. I saw an Instagram of this restaurant in Japan where you, it's like basically a stocked pond in the middle of the restaurant and you catch your fish right there and then they purportedly will cook it for you on the spot. Cool. Yeah, I don't catch stockies though. It sounds like you do. I only catch wild. John Stockton's? <laughs> but then there was a. <laughs> I only catch wild trout. Richard Stockton, Stockton College, <laughs> stock, stocking, stocking cap. Yeah, cap, cap and gown. Yeah, Colin Kaepernick. Um, <laughs> the uh, but they say that there was a there was a rumor that whatever you catch, they just put it in a different part, and then they give you some yeah. cooked fish from the back. I'm sure that's true. Yeah. I think, think we think talked so? about this, didn't we? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of tune out when you guys talk about fishing. <laughs> I mean, I missed that whole football thing you guys did. <laughs> I don't understand why you watch football just as much as we do. I like to watch it, but I don't care to predict fucking injury reports in week 15. Bro. That gets a little in the weeds for me. That's crazy. I'm a plot guy. I'm a, I'm, I'm I, all I watch the around. NFL for plot. Have you not been watching the XFL? No. Keeping up with the rookies? To be honest with you, I didn't even know that was actually a real thing. I haven't watched a single game. You guys think that Taylor Swift and uh, Travis Kelsey will be still dating by the end of the football season, broken up by the end of the football season, or mar- uh, engaged married. to be married? You know, I, I don't know, but I think the... Fuck, Mary kill those three ideas. <laughs> I mean, dude, the Chiefs, they're they're a mess right now. They'll be lucky if they have any players by the beginning of the season. How are they a mess? What are you talking about? They've got a bunch of thugs on their team. That's Ooh. what you you need a certain amount of thugs. No. The Patriots, see, we like to keep it classy. You had Aaron Hernandez on your team. <laughs> and what the fuck are you talking about? We cut him. No, they cut him from the fucking rope that he hung himself with <laughs> so they could lay him to rest. <laughs> we cut him as soon Hitchcliffe, as he got arrested. You can use that. 
As soon as he got arrested for murder, we we cut him from the roster. I don't think you. I I think it was. You said clean out his locker. <laughs> we don't want a guy like that on this team. You guys had a bunch of thugs on that team. No way. I want to know what the crazy shit was that he was saying to Wes Welker. Yeah, me too. Where Wes Welker would be like, dude, don't talk to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, he said he was pulling his dick out. Could have been just that. Football players love to do that. All, all sports athletes. All, all athletes. All like sports to, athletes they all, they all like to have their penises you think looked we go at by other out men. On the boat? No. Probably not. Probably not Francis either. threw a joke in the group chat last night. Bombs away. What? So what? that you weren't going to wear your shirt. No one replied. Didn't even get a haha. No, I only said that. You're not giving context because Sydney said, actually, you guys should probably bring like sweaters and stuff because the morning might be cold on the boat. And I said, fuck that. I'm not even going to wear a shirt. But I will. Because <laughs> I don't want to get sunburned. Did you bring a long sleeve? Sure did. Nice. Wait, so what day are you guys going out? Wednesday. Tomorrow. And then when are you coming back? Thursday. Thursday. Oh, yeah. We can't go to Rangers. Game five. Game five. Game five. Wait, well, we could game, We could go on Friday. on Friday. Rome's yeah, yeah, going to be go. away. You guys can go. Oh, Where are you going right. to be? Denver for this bachelor party. It's finally oh, happening. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is still going on. It's finally <laughs> happening. You've been talking about this Denver trip for eight months. Because I'm excited about it. <laughs> I can't be excited about my my boy's last hurrah. One more I fucking I mean, this run must be the home. most anticipated bachelor party ever. It is. <laughs> Dude, Denver's changed. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you guys want to go there anymore, man. <laughs> the they got like immigration <laughs> problem. Like, they're not even calling I mean, it you Denver. should call Sam Town again. Those restaurants that he recommended they might not even be in business. business anymore. Yeah. I know. It's tough. We're going to see McCusker on Thursday. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, cool. Um, I told Bo to go, but of course he doesn't listen. Oh, dude, I have bonus tickets. Really? I have, uh, I have, uh, I bought thirteen tickets, and wow. only I think ten guys are going to be in by that time on Thursday night. So, I'll tell him. Yeah, he tell would him. definitely go. Really? I'll tell him and Macadelic. Get them both out there. Yeah, I hundred percent would uh, give them free tickets. Um, I wonder who he's got opening for him. Maybe Gardini. Hopefully, it's Gardini. James McCann. Why don't you text him, Matt? Yeah. I don't have his phone number. <laughs> Yikes. Francis, you can text him. I have it. <laughs> it sure do. I can shoot him a DM. That's for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Go to requests. Good DM. Yo, Can't dude, just check, check, your <laughs> check your requests. Check your requests. I have a question. Who's actually opening for you? Um, and then we're going to Subtronics at Red Rocks on Friday. Fuck yeah. Cool. Then Subtronics. Phillies game on... Uh, on Saturday. Damn. Packed weekend. And then day game. Day game. Fun. And on Sunday, we're doing some other shit. I think we might go to Casa Bonita. You're staying for Sunday? Of course. It's a long bachelor party. It's Memorial Day weekend. Mm-hmm. It's last oh. hurrah, brother. It's more Memorial Day weekend. Or I guess get, you don't so, I guess home. you don't celebrate the veterans. No, I just work every single day, so I don't really take I don't even remember yeah, all Yeah, what days. work are you doing on Monday? <laughs> Spots. No, you you definitely don't have spots. Why? Where's your spots? Holiday spots are the best day to do spots. Where's your spots? The stand. Bullshit. When's what's what's Monday? Memorial Day. It's not time to make a change. Just relax. Take it easy. You're still young. That's your fault. 930 upstairs. Seven, oh, upstairs. Seven, seven thirty upstairs. Uh, upstairs is barely a spot. Brother. <laughs> so I have two spots on Monday. Upstairs, you're basically busking. <laughs> you're you're basically upstairs. You're it's basically barking outside. Last night I fucking laid it down. Upstairs, yeah, yeah standing ovation. Yeah, two people, <laughs> <laughs> two people laughing and laying it down, brother. You should have heard it. They were howling. No, and I then, didn't. And then I Norman came front. up and he went, "How's upstairs?" And I went, Pfft. "Didn't leave a lot of meat on the bone, but I'm sure you'll get him." Meat on the bone, boner, bone dogs. <laughs> Great hang last night. Who well, else? Yeah, legendary. Who else yeah. there? Me, Norman, Patton. Oswald? JC. Chazé? No, Sean Patton. Yeah, I know. General? But I knew it wasn't uh, Patton, Patton Oswald, brother. Just killer's row. I know. Just a went. couple of guys talking shop. You talk shop with Norm? Yeah. No way. Talking about the boom, talking about where we think it's heading. 
Dude, Sean Patton, we were, we were in the uh, the sort of downstairs food area. Yeah, the kitchen. Yeah, yeah the, the kitchen right by the front, by the bar. No, downstairs. No, no. Okay, by the food area. <laughs> kind of like where they, I guess they do the dishes. The, yeah. I don't even know. Yeah, you probably wouldn't, he probably wouldn't. He wouldn't know. No, where when it you is. go in down the stairs and you tuck around to the right. <laughs> Usually, when guys like you try and go back there, we go we're looking for the bathroom upstairs to the right. <laughs> <laughs> Bathroom? No, upstairs. Sorry, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, back towards the. This is for killers around to the this right. area. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Sean Patton was in that area, and I was walking from the green room to the control room or something. And he goes, "Oh, Francis, uh, I was in. I don't know where he was." And he was like, "I saw a guy that I was so certain was you that I went Francis," and the guy turned around, and I was like, "Oh, that's not you." And he, he's telling me this story, and he's like, I didn't know how to get out of it, but uh, I just was, like, embarrassed or something. And I'm sitting there like, oh, that's cool, you yeah, know, whatever. And he didn't know – I don't think he knew how to, like, end this story. So he just stopped for a second, and he was standing next to this gigantic <laughs> vat of white cream sauce. Yeah. And he goes, anyway, I made all this sour cream for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, it Killer. Was. Oh, my God. To be a fly on the fucking wall. Yeah. You wish, bro. I know. To be on the fly on the wall, that's how that saying kind of goes. You fucking wish. No, that's the sentiment of that saying. Exactly. You fucking wish you would be a fly on the yeah, wall. Yeah, that's how... You know, I know. I pretty much came up with that the saying. The ethos of that saying. I, I coined like that saying. Like you are the... the fly on the wall there. It's killers talking, and you're just fucking buzzing around, Ooh. being like, oh. That's incredibly words. mean. What a... <laughs> 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 but we actually have to leave. Yeah, we do. We are going to be late for this flight. Yeah, we got to go. All right. Make sure you guys check the gate before you... I am not letting him direct us through LaGuardia Airport Because they've been changing the gates around. They've been trying to get fucking... They're trying Virginia to Virginia Beach time. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Wait till you see my hat. You bring shades? I have shades. You bring a bucket hat? I have a straw hat. Very Very nice. nice. Cuba. Very nice. Cuba. Later part of his life. All right. We'll see you guys on... This is for Tuesday, right? To have and have not. This is for next Tuesday? Yes. See you next Tuesday. Cunt. We'll be back uh, (laughs) Thursday. See you guys then. Goodbye. Thursday from Chicago. Goodbye.